Hi, I'm Drew. Welcome to my sewing room. I am so excited for this sewing project that I am about to begin. It is for my Valentine's Day dress. So originally I thought I was going to do something really kitschy like I did last year where I sewed a top with pink and red hearts all over it and I made a apron to go over it that was really pink with hearts and it was very Valentine's Day but in a very literal sense. But it worked for me last year because I wore it while I was baking and I decorated the house for the kids. We were just home and so I didn't need anything any fancier. This year we might actually be able to leave the house. And so, so I wanted to make a proper Valentine's Day date night sort of dress. And so I went to Joanne this morning and I got the fabric and I will say this is probably the most excited I have been about my fabric choices in so long. I'm gonna show you, but first I wanna show you the pattern so that it all makes sense. So the pattern I am using, I have talked about this recently like in reels or in my sewing plans, I'm not sure, but I love this pattern. It's Simplicity S9699. It's a vintage reproduction sewing pattern from the 1950s. And this is it. I think this is really, 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 really cute. I love the fact that you have the sleeveless blouse so it works for spring or summer, but then you also have the little crop jacket to put over it. And so, oh, and the full skirt, of course. I'm so here for it. I am so here for it that actually, too, I'm going to be making a very proper, petticoat to go under it. I have this authentic vintage pattern that I'm going to use to make a really full petticoat with crinoline and boning goes in it and all of the things to make my skirt even poofier. So I'm very, very excited for both of these. Okay, so I'm gonna show you the fabric. So in this sewing pattern, we have a skirt, a top, and a jacket. So here's the thing. I love this fabric. It is so beautiful to me and it looks like valentine's day but not in that very deliberate literal sense like the outfit i made last year for valentine's day and i'll link that video if you haven't seen it in it i do like i show my decorations and the gifts that i made for my kids to give to their classmates and the sewing and all of the things like it was it was a good time but i'm looking forward to date night so anyway this is the fabric and it is sheer so what I am going to do is flat line it with this pink. I'm not even sure what this fabric is. It feels kind of like a crepe, I'm thinking. Not sure, but it's thicker. And I'm also going to use it for the jacket. So when I was choosing fabrics, I had to choose one that would be thick enough and, you know, hardy enough to be able to make the crop jacket out of. So this is going to be the lining for the skirt and for the jacket. And then this is going over top of it for the skirt. So that'll be very coordinating. And then I decided to do the blouse in this beautiful lavender. So can you like picture these colors together? I am so excited for this. Like I have projects that I'm currently working on. I literally have two dresses that are almost complete. I was supposed to be finishing them today and I literally just am too excited to cut into this fabric. So we're going to be mocking up only the blouse. I'm not gonna mock up the jacket or the skirt because the skirt doesn't need it and then the jacket, I wouldn't know how to fix it if something was wrong anyway. And so I'm just gonna make sure I cut it big enough and then I, I've learned how to taper things in to like adjust to my body shape a little bit better. So that's the thing. So the jacket has four buttons and I picked up these four, which come to think of it, I think I have more in my of these same buttons in my stash. I'm gonna have to look because I kind of wanted to coordinate the button that goes on the blouse, but they didn't have any more like this, but they had this and it's, um, it's coordinating. It's a little bit bigger than what they require, but I still think it could be really cute and it's got like the hints of the purple in there and so do these. Oh, and I have my receipts. I have to get the other one. I have the receipt from Joanne and the receipt from Hobby Lobby where I got the buttons because for some reason Hobby Lobby always has better buttons than Joanne. 
But anyway, I want to do this thing like my friend Haley. Um, she has a sewing channel called Haley Marie Vintage. So with her videos, she tracks the time that she spends making them as well as the amount of money that she spent on all of the materials. I like how she deducts, like she doesn't charge herself the full amount for the pattern if she's used it more than once. So I think that's super clever. But anyway, I plan to do that with this video because I did spend a little bit on this fabric, but I'm very happy with my choices. I wanted to shop my stash a little bit more, but some of the things in my stash I bought before, I like really knew what I liked and what I wanted to sew. And I was buying things that I thought would just like look good on camera, but not necessarily on me. So I have a lot of fabric that I don't particularly like. We're still going to use it. I'm going to find ways to use it to make it work for me. But this fabric, I am so thrilled with. And I think this is going to be a beautiful project. At the end, tell you how much money and how much time I spent constructing this. Um, and start doing that like Haley does over on her channel. Thank you for being here. Uh, if you like the video, like the video. If you haven't already, please feel free to subscribe. Um, and let's cut into this beautiful, beautiful fabric. So I finally got everything cut out. I cut a size 18. The finished garment measurements said I could have possibly got away with the 16, but I was thinking I'd rather do it too big and then just take it in versus it being too small. When I put the waistband around my waist in a 16, it was too, like a little bit too small. So I do think that 18 was the right way to go. With the skirt, which is where I'm gonna start, um, they're like one size fits all is set for one piece. Piece number one, which is the front and the back, you have to cut two on the fold. It's the only one that you cut to size in the waistband. Piece number two and three, the side front and the side back are the same for each size that's in the envelope. So I only had to make decisions when it came to these, but I'm gonna get started now getting the skirt cut out. I'm going to cut it out of the lining fabric first and then the flower. So this pattern is actually cut on the cross the crossways grain. So like my selvages are there and, and at the bottom. I had to just like cut some of it off because I had so much yardage. It was just pulling off the table. Piece number one, I have to cut two on the fold, but then the rest of the pieces I just cut two of so I'll have to fold it in half. I am going to get these pinned down and get them cut out. I hope I have enough fabric. I'm like this is I've never cut fabric this way before and so if anybody knows like why this is done or what benefit it has I would love to hear about it. I don't know. So I'm gonna get these pinned down and then we'll get them cut out. So yes, the way I was instructed to cut these pieces out was very different to me. I had never cut anything out this way before. If you know the real reason, please remember to share that with me. So I proceeded with getting everything pinned down and then I moved on to getting everything cut out, um, which was a bit of a process just working with so much yardage that I had and the way I had to um, fold it to cut it out the way they instruct it. So this took a little bit of time, but I got it done So I got the skirt all cut out. My next step is to get the jacket cut out. I have the skirt the main fabric and the see-through fabric cut out um, I think I'm gonna say flat lining that for tomorrow, but I'm gonna get the jacket cut out and then I'm gonna call it a day It's a lot later than I wanted it to be. I took a break for a while to have dinner with my family and just some Saturday things and so getting a little tired but I want to get this cut out and tomorrow we'll get the skirt and the jacket done tomorrow night and the next time I get to sell in a few days I will do a mock-up of the blouse and then we will do um, alterations or whatever needs to be done in the real version and then the finishing work on the final day and then I edit and take pictures and all of that so a lot of work goes into these videos whereas just sewing without filming would probably be so much faster but I love um, filming the process and sharing my sewing journey so 
Um, remember to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I'm going to cut this out and then we'll pick this back up tomorrow. Good morning. It is very, very early on Sunday morning. It is not even... It is not even quite nine. I've already made breakfast and washed my face and all of those things and we're gonna get back right into it. So where we left off last night, I said I was gonna cut this out and then go to bed. I literally pinned it down and then just went to bed. I was so exhausted, but I'm hoping to get through a lot today. Um, our plans that we had have been canceled, so I think I'm going to get to sew for the majority of the day. I found it hard to time myself yesterday because I have to stop so much, like to make snack or lunch or somebody's crying or somebody's fighting or <laughs> all of the things. And so it was a little hard to track my time, but I think I spent about three to three and a half hours just cutting out the pattern pieces to my size and then I cut out the skirt out of both fabrics and that was all I got done. So today I'm hoping to complete the skirt. That would be the goal and to maybe even the jacket. We will see um, how long I get to work. I put a roast in a crock pot so I'm only going to have to worry about sides and I got a few hours before that. Um, we've done breakfast. Kids are chilling. I'm going to watch 1923 because it came back today after like a two week hiatus and yeah, that's what we're going to do. So let's get to work. So now I have everything cut out. Well, not everything. I still haven't cut out the mock-up for the bodice, but I have everything for the skirt and everything for the jacket cut out. The first thing I'm going to do is start flat lining these pieces and I'm going to start with piece number one. My only real trouble with this fabric is I don't really know the front from the back. That is the thing. Piece number one seems the easiest because it's the front and the back cut on the fold. So I'll be able to just like, I'll be able to tell <laughs> what's what, but some of the other pieces, I'm going to have to make sure I'm flat lining to the right side. That's why I didn't want to do it last night when my brain wasn't like fully there because my last project I was working on, which is a skirt hanging over there, I thought that the skirt was like the easiest part and I didn't stitch them at center back. Like I had stitched a back to a side, whatever I did. And I did it on both skirts. I'm making both views of one pattern and messed up both of the skirts, had to pick them apart and start over. It was like a mess. And so I'm a little bit afraid of what they looks like now piece number one prepared i have the chiffon pinned down on it i was thinking about basting it by hand but i just used a lot of pins i'm going to take one to the sewing machine and then if it doesn't behave correctly i will base the other one down by hand we'll see i'm going to give this first one a try and then we'll see and we're going to take this nice and slow oh it is shifting Flatlining was definitely a long process that felt a little boring for some reason, but it took a while to get the pieces done. But once I kind of got in the groove and used a lot more pins, things went a lot more smoothly. So I've now flatlined piece number one, just one of piece number one. I'm just going to flatline the rest of the pieces, I'll do it off camera. I won't bore you with just watching me flatline. And then we'll get started on the actual construction of the skirt. So my goal for today was to have the skirt and the jacket done, but I don't think time is going to allow. Um, it's already about 10.30, so I've been at this for an hour and a half. I will say I move a little slower because I am watching television at the same time but it is taking a lot longer. And then even with this piece number one, I was supposed to cut two on the fold. I thought I did, but I, I didn't unless I lost the other piece. And so I had to cut another piece and then that slowed that down and then just using all of the pins. And so now this is piece two of piece one. 
and I'm gonna flat line it. And then I'll meet you back here and we'll get started putting it together. I'm really um, looking forward to the skirt, the way it's flat in the front and the back, but then has the pleats on the side. I think it's gonna be really flattering. I did a pickup and store order for jo at Joanne for the materials for the petticoat um, that I'm making from an authentic vintage pattern to go under this. And I was thinking, and it's made out of crinoline and has boning in it, so that should be interesting. I'll put my cotton petticoat under it so that way I don't have um, anything like up against my skin that's weird. So, um, yeah, we're this is going to be great. We're moving along. So I'll do this and then I'll meet you back here. So it's still Sunday, February 5th. I just had to run to get my pickup order from Joanne. And it's the materials for the petticoat that I'm making using this sewing pattern. So it's just some crinoline, and then this one actually calls for boning as well, and I think that's going to make it extra poofy. I haven't decided yet if I'm going to make that its own video or if it'll be included with this one. So we'll see. The progress so far is literally all I managed to do this morning before I left to go run errands was flatline all of the skirt pieces. So they're all done. Looks pretty good, I think. Um, I need to transfer the markings because I didn't on any of them. And maybe I'll try and get the skirt assembled. But honestly, I'm tired. I kind of just want to go lay down. And I think that's what I might do. It's really hard for me with this sewing because I, I just don't get much time to do it. And then when I do have a little bit of free time, I'm kind of just really tired. I don't know. I, I think I'll try and work a little bit longer on this because I'm really excited. I want to see some progress. The flatlining process like was work and it took time, but it just didn't feel like I was getting anything done, which, I mean, of course I did. It's a step out of the way, and the jacket is cut out. It's still a lot to get done and a little bit of time, and for once in my sewing journey, I would like to meet an actual deadline. So, yeah, let's let's give it at least... It's what 337. We're gonna go till five and then that way we'll have dinner and then we'll do the Sunday bed bath book book bath book bed. <laughs> That's how tired I am. We'll do that and then um hopefully maybe during the week, uh hour a day in the evenings, I'll be able to get some of this done. If not, it will be an all day project next Saturday. So um, we'll see, you know, it's really so I got started transferring those markings for the pleats on the outside. I wanted to make sure I did this correctly. I wanted it to look the way it's intended to with that flat front and flat center back and then the pleats to the side. So I made sure to get these markings transferred accurately and to make sure I knew what direction each one was going to be going. So the very First real step now that everything is flatlined and I transferred all the markings is you're going to take one piece number one and attach it to both piece number twos. So I have piece number two and one piece number one and I'm going to pin them down and then we'll get that to the sewing machine and they also say do not press seams open which I'm not sure exactly why that is but that's what they say so we're going to um, get them pinned together now. So as this skirt starts to come together, I'm getting more excited. If you've been following my channel since the beginning when I started sewing three years ago, my sewing is starting to improve greatly, which makes me want to do it more, even though I don't often have the time. I am choosing to make the time as best as I can, but I definitely want to have a wardrobe that is made by me and made well. And though I really, really love vintage fashion, I want to be able to wear it in a more modern way. And so that's my goal here. So finally at the sewing machine, I always say there's so many other steps to sewing and you spend the least amount of time actually at the sewing machine but here I am finally getting these skirt panels sewn together and I'm very excited to see how this sewing pattern will come out. If you've been with me you know I've had some patterns that I really love that 
do not end up in great finished garments. And so I'm really optimistic with this one and I'm hoping that it ends in something really beautiful that I love. I really love the fabric and so um, that's off to a good start and so is the skirt. And so with all of these giant skirt panels, there was more pinning and more stitching and it is looking really good. So the skirt is all seamed together. It's pretty big. And before I do the pleats, they want me to finish this raw edge with double fold bias tape. And so this was like finicky trying to get it to fit in there, but I think I did best as I could. And now I'm just gonna slip stitch it down by hand and then we will work on pleating the skirt and then we'll be moving on to the jacket. So even with all of my markings, I still got confused with the pleating situation. So I pulled out the pattern pieces to make sure I was doing everything the way that I should be. And it was a bit tricky, especially the way they wanted you to pleat it at the side seam. And I believe that's why you finished that raw edge with the bias binding is because you weren't going to have a zipper or anything. And so um, I was just very, very cautious with how I pleated this and I think I did a good job in the end. Um, it was definitely worth the amount of time that I took to get it done. I finally got the skirt pleated down. It was not the easiest thing, but it looks right. It was a little weird with the chiffon over top of the other fabric but i'm hoping once i baste it down and press it and everything it comes together a little bit nicer so we'll see what happens i had used so many pins on these pleats and i was so afraid to mess it up that i decided to baste everything down by hand before i took it to the sewing machine to get it all stitched in place and I definitely think that was the right decision. These came out really well. The next step for the skirt was to get the waistband pinned on. And this is when I noticed that things weren't matching up all the way as they should have been. And so I don't know what issue I had with that, but it was definitely something that made the skirt still so much bigger than the waistband. Um, perhaps I didn't pleat something um, far enough or deep enough rather and that led to the discrepancy between the waistband and the size of the skirt and once I got the skirt waistband attached and tried it on I realized that the skirt itself was way too big how this happened I have no idea and so I folded it over about an inch and a half on both sides of the waistband before I stitched on the hook and eye and this seemed to do the trick so with the skirt finally complete, we can move on to the jacket. These are the pieces that have to be interfaced, so I'm gonna get those cut out. I have already transferred all of the markings to the jacket pieces, and we are ready to get those over to the sewing machine. The very first step the instructions gives is to stay stitch the edge of piece number 11, which is the front and the front sleeve because they are connected. And so that's what I did. So last night we left off with, I finished the skirt. I hemmed it by hand. It just needs a good pressing at the bottom. I transferred the markings to the front piece, which is piece number 11, and I stay stitched the edge. The next step was to reinforce one inch from this Point. I put in my markings, but I haven't done that yet. So that is going to be the first step I'm going to do. I'm going to take my pins out. I have a Zoom meeting coming up. So I'm going to try and get done what I can get done before it is time for my meeting. So we're going to reinforce the points, which is still part of step number one. And so here is that marking. So they sit in the seam allowance, one inch this way and one inch this way because we're gonna to have to clip into there, so. So I head over to the sewing machine to do this step and this is about the last easy step of this jacket. So this is where it gets a little tricky. There were some dots here on the pattern piece and then it says for me to hand base this one eighth of an inch on the small dots going down to nothing till I get there 
and I'm not sure if I did that right. I think it'll probably be easier on the sewing machine for me to gauge if I'm doing that right or not. But I'm guessing that's what it's supposed to look like. So this is what it looks like. I'm hoping that that's right. So now I'm just going to do the other one and then we'll do that dart too. Okay, maybe there was one or two easy steps left. Here I am pinning in those big darts that go on the jacket. And this part was not difficult at all, but you will soon see when all of the drama starts with this jacket. So I got that first dart put in. That was not a big deal. It was a dart like any other. But then I had to go back to the instructions to figure out this next dart, if that's what you want to call it. It required a ruler and pins and all of these weird instructions where you had to be so far from each point that they didn't draw on for you, which I think they should have, but they didn't. And it was really weird and it took a little bit um, of time to figure out and just to make sure that I was doing correctly because I had never seen anything like that and I've done authentic vintage patterns I normally do and even the instructions for those weren't as weird as these and the darts had to be done on not just the fabric but also the facing but after I got those put in they wanted you to cut those open and press and so I did that and then it was time to start working on the back so I drew in those dart lines which were pretty simple it was two darts on the sleeve and one in the middle and then you'll stitch the back two pieces together after you put those darts in. So that part was not complicated at all and went pretty smoothly. So after stitching in the back sleeve darts, I pinned the back together and took it over to the sewing machine. And then it was time to do this facing at the bottom of it. And it was so weird and I was so discouraged that I decided to just put the jacket to the side and move on to the bodice. I don't know if I mentioned this before, but on the pattern envelope, it says that there are views B and view C for the blouse. And the only difference is the way you lay the fabric out. So either like horizontal to the grain or vertical to the grain. I, I'm not sure why, but that is the only difference between view C and D. And I think whichever one you pick, you have to stick to it when it comes to the grain lines or you'll have pieces that shift that shouldn't and other weird things. If anybody has any insight to why they would do that, then please feel free to let me know. So I got started with the blouse the same way that I did the jacket. I drew in my dart lines, when to get those pinned in, all of the things. What I did not know when I purchased this fabric that I was so excited about, how I didn't know this, I don't understand, but the back was completely different from the front. The front was like a crepe, like how like a crepe back satin looks, I guess. But the back was like this shiny polyester-y melt when you iron it sort of situation. It was the weirdest thing. And then the front of the blouse has these pleats at the neckline. Everyone knows I struggle with pleats and darts. And so this was a thing. And then trying to get those right and then pressing them in, seeing that it was wrong and then having to press them out and repress them in with this fabric that is literally sticking together when you iron it. All these weird things. Do not know what to call this fabric, but I advise you not to buy it. It made this project a little bit more difficult than it had to be. I was not very happy with it. And everyone knows like my last couple of videos and sewing projects I was so proud of that I was so excited to sew again. I was so excited for this make. Um, I love the pattern envelope, which I think might be one of my issues. I fall in love with pattern envelopes. I don't know who else this happens to and then realize that it may not be the thing for me. Um, and I was in love with this fabric without having all of the information. And these are the darts where you have to like start in the middle and go to the end and then reverse and go to the other way they do shape things well but they are a pain to get put in i got them in so i will say even with the wonky fabric this blouse is going so much better than the jacket i lay the two front pieces together and get those pinned in place so they can get over to the sewing machine and you're going to leave it open above the notch this is where it folds in at the neckline and does that like open keyhole situation. And so I took those over to the sewing machine and got them stitched together. And the blouse is moving along a lot faster than that jacket. 
You can see here how wonky those pleats look in the front, but I do believe I get those fixed at least a little bit better in the end. So I pin the blouse together at the shoulder seams and at the side seams, and I take it over to the sewing machine and get those stitched in, and then I hem the bottom going completely around the bottom of the blouse with just like a just small double fold hem. This fits well, especially once I add the zipper. I think it's good. I don't know how these are going to end up. I was worried about them from the jump, but once everything's positioned, I'll like I'll try and repress them in, make them look a little better. Maybe once the facing and everything's on and it pulls the way it's supposed to, um, we'll see what happens. But yes, I was very concerned about these from the beginning, and I had every reason to be. <clears throat> Excuse me. So. Okay, so at this point, I am not mad at the blouse. I am still a little mad at the fabric, but it is what it is. So I just have to get in the zipper, which I end up putting in by hand. And then the neck facing and the underarm facings that weren't hard tasks, a little bit time consuming on that neck facing the way it goes across the collar. And so once I got it pinned down, which you see me doing here, I had to then top stitch it on. With some of my facings, they didn't match up the way they should have. And I wonder if that had something to do with me maybe mixing up views B and view C with how you cut it on the grain line. So if you use this pattern, that is definitely something that I would pay attention to. But otherwise, it went pretty smoothly. I got it top stitched down. I was going to do it by hand, but at this point, I was so over it. Um, it only needs one buttonhole for the neckline, which I did practice. Um, before I did the real thing and it came out pretty decent. This is what it looks like. It's not my best work, not my neatest work, but not the worst, especially for the fact that I hadn't done something like this before. So um, really can't complain. The darts are still an issue for me or the pleats rather, but it is what it is. So with the blouse and the skirt complete, it's time to go back to this jacket that I have been avoiding mainly because I do not understand why it is faced the way it's faced or how this collar situation works, but we're going to tackle it anyway. I pinned it at the upper arms like they told me. I pinned that facing piece on wrong side to wrong side or right side to wrong side, which was weird. I didn't understand. I did not understand this collar. In the end, I end up ditching their instructions and just getting it how I live, as the you say, because none of this made any sense. As you'll see, I'm not necessarily pleased with the way I finish it, but I am pleased that I figured it out on my own and did it in a way that makes sense to me because whatever they were asking me to do, I literally could not comprehend at all and it just made no sense and I think there was things they wanted you to do but they left no instructions for them. So now it looks really weird like this but I'm pretty sure this has something to do with the collar and we need to stitch the underarm seam so that's the next step. So the way this is looking is like this is that collar how it drapes but it's gonna need to be faced and then that's the back piece. Here's the front. The instructions said that I was supposed to stitch these together, matching up the notches, but then the rest of this hangs. And then I have a dot here that probably should have matched up this dot. So maybe that should have went on first. And then this, a lot of, with these instructions, I've had to just do what I thought was best. I wish I had just lined it or faced it in the way that I know how instead of listening to these instructions because they are not good. And I think some of it's confusing because they assume that your interfacing and your piece are two different things. Like I guess they're still using the instructions from when iron-on interfacing wasn't a thing, but they definitely should have updated these instructions a a lot more than what they did so I'm gonna try and take this apart and stitch this on and then stitch this neck edge on even though it says to stitch it on first so this side is lining up better so I'm gonna stitch it first and see what happens over on this side it's something weird happening with the place where I had to snip it so 
maybe I don't know we'll have to see what the hell so happened. the jacket was a nightmare to finish they don't tell you when to snip so I think I snipped it at the wrong place so I fixed that by hand as you see me doing here I would like to challenge all you seamstresses to make this sewing pattern and let's compare notes. I would like to know if this is just me. So here I am finishing that back band in a way that I've seen vintage dresses, the straps finished and that worked. And then the bottom of the jacket, I finished in this very weird way, but it ended up making it look like this. So that worked for me. And I switched buttons that I found in my stash. I can't wait to show you all the finished garment. So let's get into it. So before we get into the final photos, a couple of things. One is I would like to thank this month's Kofi Benefactors. And two, I told you at the start of this project that I would do a cost breakdown or analysis at the end. First, let's start with Kofi. No, actually, I want to start with everyone who supports my channel just by watching. Every time you watch a video, like a video, share a view video, leave a comment, or otherwise engaged with my content, it supports the channel. So, thank you to all of you. But for my Kofi supporters, I definitely appreciate your gift. Um, no matter the amount, it feels like validation of my time and efforts and energy that I spend creating this content. Also, that is very expensive, which we will get into in a second. But so thank you so much. Every single dollar that you put towards my Kofi goes back into this channel, whether it's buying fabric or patterns or whatever else, lights, whatever I need to produce better content. And I do hope that you can see the improvement in the quality of my um, content those of you who've been here from the beginning and if not go back and watch some of those older videos that were shot on an old phone but that's another thing so this month I would like to thank Nadia Alexis and Dorothy Young for your Kofi contributions thank you so much and if anyone else would like to contribute you can find that link in the description okay so on to cost analysis the pattern I got for $5.99 from Joanne when it was on sale, so that was a good deal. It's my first time using it, so it's the full $5.99. Um, secondly, at Joanne on fabric and thread and interfacing, I spent $194. That is a lot, but this skirt took a lot of yardage, and I essentially made it twice because I overlaid it, and that chiffon was very expensive, even at 40% off, so that was kind of a lot. For the buttons, I spent $19.05 at Hobby Lobby because I told you Hobby Lobby definitely has better buttons than Joanne. But I ended up only using one of those buttons and I'm not too sure of the cost I paid for the ones from Mood that I found in my stash. So we're just going to go with the $19.05 that I spent at Hobby Lobby. Now for labor. So this project took me about 20 to 22 hours of sewing and construction and cutting and all of those things. So we'll just go with 20 that is not including editing which is a whole thing of its own we won't even lump that into this just yet and at twenty dollars an hour which is the going rate for a seamstress here in kentucky that is four hundred dollars in labor which puts the total cost for this project at about six hundred and twenty dollars and yes i could have bought a designer dress for that price but it wouldn't have been made by me it wouldn't have been as fun i wouldn't have learned as much i wouldn't have been as relaxed as I am as sewing does for me and I'm pretty sure therapy is a little bit more expensive so I sew instead so if you've made it this far thank you for being here if you want to support the channel through Kofi you can if you want to support the channel by giving this video a thumbs up a share or leaving me a comment that would be great too and now let's get into the final photos so the buttons, I am so happy that I chose these instead of those sparkly ones I bought. Um, even though I did use it on the blouse, these are perfect for the jacket and I think I can get wear out of this jacket with other outfits. And so I want to show you the blouse underneath. So the blouse I'm not as happy with. The pleats are a little weird like I said before, but I like it a lot. Both are a little big. I could have went with the 16 I believe but it looks good and I can adjust the skirt I'm not that sure about the proportions of the jacket like maybe it could have been a little longer over my bust but 
Overall, I really love it. I love the shoes I paired with it. You'll have to let me know what you think. I did a reel on the accessories, so check that out. Um, I like it. I do. Some things could have been changed, but overall, I think it's a pretty fabulous look. It looks like a date night, and I'm really, really happy with it. Please let me know what you think. Um, if you make this pattern, share your thoughts on it with me because it was an interesting one. Remember to support this video and I will see you in the next one that is soon and sure to come.